are good to go. Welcome. Good deal. Well, thank you, PM&R Scholars, for putting this together. I think it's an awesome thing that you guys are doing, and we really appreciate that. Um, I'm Adam uh, Epps. I'm one of the PGY3s here at uh, Vanderbilt. Um, I also have three of the other uh, residents in my class on with me, uh, Lauren Massey, uh, Scott Miller, and Evan Berlin. So they'll be on kind of commenting as we go along, as well as able to answer any of your questions at the end. Um, so talking about our program, um, this is just a PowerPoint, like kind of getting down to the nitty gritty of things that you can't find online. So most of this is just gonna be things that you cannot look up on our website. And before I move on, I'll actually give a quick shout out to, to uh, Dr. Key and give her a go balls. I gave her one. Uh, what's and even up, the Adam? And let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so what we're going to talk about for our uh, presentation is that you can't find online are our yearly schedules, uh, awesome didactics, uh, what the call is like, because everybody wants to know about that, um, the benefits you don't want to ask about, uh, resident involvement outside the department, and what our residents do at the spare time, where they live, and then popular things to do in Nashville. So I just want to give a shout out first to our leadership, um, two newer additions to our program. Our program chair, Dr. Kennedy, he's been here for the last two years and has made major changes to our program, has brought has double, over doubled our faculty, uh, bringing on some amazing attendings from top-notch programs, um, and just an amazing guy. If you have free time, look, up, uh, look him up and you'll find out all the publications he's had. His CV is like 50 pages long. Um, our program director, um, Dr. Sullivan, he's new this year from Colorado, awesome guy, uh, as I'll talk about him a little bit more. Uh, he's always, his door is always open. Uh, you can come talk, chat with him anytime. Um, really uh, lends his ear to us and takes our opinions into consideration. Moving on. Um, so this is just a, a uh, picture of our class. It doesn't have our current interns on it, but it has last year's PGY fours. Uh, these are meetings we have with Bill uh, often in the morning. We usually have these at least monthly, sometimes twice a month with Bill. And we'll also have these uh, twice a month with Dr. Kennedy, our program chair as well, which I think is awesome because I know at some programs you don't even know who the program chair is or see them very often. But both of these guys um, had their door open and you can always uh, come by and chat with them. We also do a thing with our program director uh, called uh, Thirsty Thursdays. Um, it's the first Thursday of each month uh, where he'll take us out and we'll go do trivia uh, and grab drinks. And we can also talk to him about anything in the department at that time too. So it's pretty cool that we get to do that with him. And um, these are some, just a few of our attendings that we have. Like I said, we have a bunch of new uh, staff uh, from everywhere. A new sports guy, Dr. Shaw from UPMC is awesome. We get to do a lot of ultrasound with him. Uh, we have a new TVI attending, Dr. Plummer. Um, which is a, a, who's a great teacher, and he's from the University of Washington. Um, new S, two SEI attendings, Dr. Jones from the University of Washington, and uh, Dr. Morgan, who's not on here yet. Uh, he'll be starting this September. He's from uh, University of Harvard. So a lot of great staff, top-notch people that we hired in the past few years that have been amazing and really uh, changed our didactics and made have improved them for the better, no doubt. Um, so kind of what a lot of people want to talk about is, you know, what's your schedule look like each year? Uh, as other programs have said, we're actually another program that's a categorical program, which uh, as ECU kind of mentioned, I think that's it's awesome to be a categorical program because you get to make a lot of friends um, in your intern year that you make for life. We still, my class, I know we still hang out with a few of our friends often and go out on the lake with them. Um, and it's just good that anytime you're consulting over there that you know the person you're talking to. Um, and they know who they're talking to as well. And just the continuity is amazing. But in your intern year, um, I'll, I'll say our intern year is a pretty tough year as well. It's actually gotten a lot better um, over the past year. Uh, we were able to add some extra outpatient stuff, but in the past it had um, seven months of uh, wards. Um, four weeks of that's ICU. But I will say our class was, we were required to do ICU, but now they don't require you to do ICU. So usually if you want to, you can do it. Um, you can get a lot of procedures in there, but if you don't want to do it, usually you can trade out of it with uh, plenty of the home crit uh, re residents who are interested in that. Um, now they get two months of outpatient um, instead of just one. We also get a one month of PM&R. Um, we get one month of neurology, which is new. 
Um, used to, we did not get neurology in our intern year. So that's going to be um, a lot better. It's a much better schedule with that. And then we have one month of emergency medicine. Uh, in the second year, um, it, this is when most of your inpatient uh, takes place, uh, inpatient rehab. It's three months of TBI, uh, three months of spinal cord injury, two months of general rehab, uh, one month of rehab medicine. And then, so for your outpatient stuff in your third year, it's three months. You get one month of palliative care um, and then rehab therapies, just learning about all the different types of therapy that we offer at Vanderbilt, inpatient and outpatient. Um, I think the palliative care is very helpful. I mean, I've seen people on Twitter recommending that as a elective if you can do that, just because it helps you uh, get comfortable with talking about tough situations. So I think it's a great month. Uh, we also get exposed to pain and spine early, and we have a month of that in our second year. And then we also have a month of VA outpatient clinics, which is newer to the schedule. Um, and it's going to be very different with most of our like spinal cord attendings and pain uh, attendings as well as spine. So that and, and MSK as well. Um, moving on to the third year, um, third year, it's two months of inpatient, which for us is two months of stroke. Um, we get two months of EMGs. Uh, one of those months is at the VA and one month is at Vanderbilt. And the one at Vanderbilt is mostly with neurology. The one with the, with, uh, the VA is with one of our PM&R attendings. Um, we did two months of inpatient consults with Dr. Huddleston, um, two months of sports with Dr. Schaff. It's a lot of MSK and ultrasound, but we get a lot of ultrasound training during that month and a lot of peripheral injections. Um, one, month of, one month of peds with uh, Dr. Martin. We get a lot of Botox with her, uh, and that's mixed between clinic and consults with, those, with that peds month. Um, again, another month of spine or, spine or pain. And then we, the thing that I think is awesome about our program is that we do offer two months of elective or selective that you can choose what you want to do um, during two of those months. So I think that's not every program is able to offer that. I think that's awesome. And also our program allows you to do in a way at a program if you're, very, if you're really interested in a program, because I know certain, certain um, fellowships are very competitive, especially like sports. So this allows you to do electives or at other programs. Uh, throughout the year. Unfortunately, due to COVID this year, our uh, two guys who were going into sports weren't, weren't able to do this, but I think that's really awesome for our program. Um, and then the last year of residency, uh, it's three months of VA outpatient, two months EMG, um, one month of stroke, and then one month of general rehab. So again, only two months of inpatient in your fourth year as well. Um, you get another month of sports, another month of peds, one month of consults, um, one month of spine and pain or pain, and then a, a month selective. So moving on, our didactics. Um, during the internal medicine year, it's about eight to 10 hours per week. Usually all of these are around lunch. Um, they also have um, morning rounds um, after uh, your rounds uh, with your, on, the, on the wards. Um, those are not always required to be at, uh, but they do have coffee and usually like bagels or donuts or something. But every day during the internal medicine year, one one plus is that they have really good lunch every day, like Chick-fil-A or um, some Mediterranean things around here that we really love. So I think that's a big plus for the uh, internal medicine year. Uh, during the PM and R years, our didactics right now are a little bit different than they used to be. Currently right now, since COVID, we've switched it up to where we're doing five to 10 hours per week uh, with a 7 a.m. and a noon lecture. Prior to this, we were doing, uh, our lectures were always on Thursday um, and they were usually from like eight to noon on Thursday mornings. And so right now we're trying to schedule out just to get a little bit more didactic time and to be able to make sure that all we can get more attending time with our, or more lecture time with our attendings. Uh, but this could change. So just to note that uh, we have a 12 month rotating schedule with our didactics, the attendings um, and specialists present 95% of all didactics. We have a spine didactics every Wednesday, except for one Wednesday of the month uh, with all of our spine attendings. Um, we do grand rounds monthly, whether it's one of our attendings giving it or one on outside, or it could be someone from another program, sometimes an ortho attending or a, a, a neurosurgery attending will come in and give us um, a grand round. So a lot of different people and sometimes even uh, people from other outside programs, Stanford, I know University of Washington have come and have done a few grand rounds as well. Um, the ones we lead through the didactics, we, each resident uh, does a journal club. Um, once a month. So you'll have a month assigned each year to do your own journal club uh, and you get paired with an attending and can pick which topic you would like. And then the MMI, MMNIs are done quarterly and the PGY2s usually do the MMNIs. So moving on with hands-on didactics, we get 
we did to do a lot of things um, in the far left there you can see, and the far right, you can see that we get to do a lot of ultrasound uh, teaching. We did have Dr. Jane who recently just left, but we added Dr. Shaw, who's an, an excellent uh, lecturer and a uh, teacher and has taught us so much about ultrasound already in the, the year that he's been here. Um, we also have the Botox reps come around and bring all of their uh, modules and we get to practice doing Botox injections that are really neat and show you you're in the exact right spot. So I think that's um, really awesome. Um, and then the picture in the middle, that's not a picture, that's one of our chiefs from last year using the C-arm. Um, it's not a picture from this room, but we actually um, do get to do uh, injections on cadavers, which is awesome teaching um, with uh, Dr. Yang. So I think that's one of the pluses of our program that um, you can do um, interventional techniques um, on cadavers here at Vanderbilt, and we get time for that while we're on our spine rotation. Um, call, what everyone wants to know about. So currently it's home call. Um, cover about 40 to 70 patients on the weekend. I would say this number is usually around like 50. Um, and currently during COVID, it's been around 50. Um, we do um, all of the acute care transfers go to Vanderbilt. Don't send them out anywhere else. Um, so during your PGY2 year, when we first start call, um, this has changed up a little bit, which I like it better. I think overall, it's, people are going to like it a lot more. Um, you do eight weekends per year during your PGY2 year. It's Friday night, 5 p.m. to Monday at 8 a.m. Um, you round on the patients um, and follow up uh, with the physician after that. Oops, sorry about that. Um, you currently, we, right now, with a, we have started a new interventional spine program. So now the fellows are currently doing the uh, rounding sometimes on the weekends, um, at least two weekends of the month. So if you're with a fellow, you may round on some patients on your own, and then they'll see them as well, and you'll write a few notes. But uh, usually the most notes we write in a weekend is like 10 to 15 on a Saturday, 10 to 15 on a Sunday. Um, and then uh, for PGY2, for a weeknight call, you do it every fourth Monday and Tuesday night. Um, and that's 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. well. Um, third year, you do three weekend calls per year, and then you do every fourth Wednesday and Thursday night um, from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. And then PGY4 year, it's two weekend calls uh, per year and no weekday call. So this has switched up a little bit in the past. It used to be most of the fourth years had no call at all. And then twos took every weekend, split the weekends between them. Uh, but we just realized that that was a lot and kind of with a new program, it had to be that way. But I think changing this up how it is now and spreading it out a little bit more is gonna be much better. And the twos appreciate it a lot more. Uh, benefits here at Vanderbilt, first year you get $607, $600 to $700 for food. Um, parking is free here, which is awesome. Um, and it's also parking is really close to Stallworth, which is the inpatient rehab where you'll be every day. So that's a benefit. You don't have to walk all the way across campus or catch another ride. Um, I know at some places you have to do that. Uh, we have coffee and snacks free every day in the break room. Uh, and then we have free access to the Diani Center, which is uh, located just next to the rehab. They have a swimming pool that people like to go swim in. Um, I don't know. I know a lot of us don't really use the gym there, but you can if you want to. You just have to talk to them about it. Um, other benefits, um, if you, I know some at early in the year use the Vanderbilt Athletic Center, it's about $40 per month. Uh, one benefit that I like about our program is that you get $2,000 for education fee each year. Uh, during intern year, most of us use it, use like $1,000 to pay for step three. Um, and then just other book supplies and then conferences. But it, I think it's nice that you can kind of split it up any way you want. It's not that you have to spend, um, a thousand dollars here and like for um, conferences or a thousand dollars for books because maybe if you have all your books in your second year and you're not going to many conferences that year or you can buy all of your books with your two thousand dollars and then in your third year if you know you're going to multiple conferences you can spend all two thousand dollars on conferences and travel so i think that's nice um and you're able to attend aap and r aap and aap and r as early as your pgy one year uh, if you're able if you're able to work that out with your attendings so i think that's a plus as well and these are some pictures of our uh, fourth years and the most re and the first graduating class of Dr. Stark at AAPMNR. Um, so some resident involvement outside of the department. We have uh, gets tons of sport coverage that you want. High school football is a big one around here that I know a lot of our sports residents do. You can start in your um, second or third year um, and assisting with a PGY4. And actually, I know it says there that you have the opportunity to cover your own high school team as a PGY4, but I know some of them covered their own as a PGY3, as long as you got started as a PGY2. So I think that's pretty cool that you can cover your own team early on. Uh, we also cover the Rock and Roll Marathon here in Vanderbilt or here in Nashville, which is a big 
marathon here. Um, cover the cross country team and track team. You can cover those on the weekends as well as Tough Mudders that come around here. Um, we get to do Vanderbilt. We get to do sport evaluations, have the, these athletes in a bunch of our clinics. Uh, we have the VMC Ethics Committee, uh, Sedation Analgesic Committee, um, Executive Medical Director Forum, uh, House Staff Advisory can Council. But there's just a bunch of things here that you can get involved in. Uh, I know the last one, the legislative rulings, Sterling, he's one of our PGY4s, and he's big um, in um, legislation, uh, especially on opioid addiction, things like that. So if you're interested in that, you can – Hit him up, and that's Sterling Herring, by the way. He's a PGI-4. Hey, Adam, you have uh, five minutes left. Okay. So we'll just kind of skip through these just so I can get to some questions with you guys. We teach the first-year medical students here what PM&R is all about. Initially here at Vanderbilt, they had no idea. But I think over the past few years, we actually have two or three people from this fourth-year class at Vanderbilt going into PM&R. So making some big strides here. Um, these are just some of the programs that our uh, alumni have gone to, our first two classes. Um, a lot of the interventional spine. Uh, we have one Cle Cleveland Clinic, Sports Med at, in Akron. Um, Sarah's staying here for a VA Quality Scholar. Um, and then interventional spine in Hopkins and Vanderbilt. And then Ryan Casoros, he did neuromuscular medicine at Wake Forest. Very interesting EMGs. And then Chan, um, he did his sports medicine at Mount Sinai. And let's see. Like I said, we like to work hard, play hard. There's one of our pictures from our Thirsty Thursdays with Bill, um, went out to conferences, snowboarding. Um, just so we have to like, like, like to hang out and have a good time with each other. Have fantasy football leagues. You can get uh, tickets to Titans games, Preds games, uh, National Sounds. This is kind of a picture. You guys can look at this later because I know these are all, this is recorded just to see where people live and you can ask us more questions about that. Um, why Nashville? Awesome place to be, Music City. I mean, Broadway, what's better than that? Although a lot of people think it's all country music. Um, there's actually all kinds of music. It's just like a music capital. Um, just festivals that we have all the time, uh, Bonnaroo, uh, other large festivals around um, the Parthenon that are really cool. Lots of food trucks all the time and beer festivals. And also, it's actually a really family-friendly place. We have a lot of lakes to go to, uh, the zoo, uh, like small water parks at the lake. Um, it's also a really green city too. There are tons of parks around um, our city that you can go to anywhere. Um, and then a lot of lakes as well. So a lot of outdoorsy things to do, outside, even though Nashville is a growing city and very popular, I think there's still, that you can get right outside the city to uh, more rural areas very easily. And then also, um, this is actually from an older slide. I just wanted to say that Nashville is, the Nashville airport is pretty awesome in that you can get through the airport and through security super fast and go to any country or any country, any city, uh, any big city nearby in a direct flight. And I think that's pretty awesome about our airport. So just an easy place to travel if you're coming from further away. Um, but now I will open it up to questions and we'll try to answer some of those for you guys. Excellent, you have two minutes left. Let's see. Do any, any of my other peeps on here have any questions or have any see the questions that they can want to answer? Scott or Evan or Lauren? I don't see any questions. I'm Scott. I'm one of the PGY3s as well. Um, one of the co-residents with Adam. I just want to say thanks to everybody for coming out. It's a huge turnout here, it looks like. Um, and just a really, really cool forum. Oh, there is a question. What's the cost of living in Nashville? Um, oh my gosh, we got them coming now. So cost of living depends on where you live. Um, I would say it's anywhere from probably like 800 to 1200 um, depending on where you are in the city, I would say is a reasonable thing, but that's definitely location based. Mm -hmm. um, what is one thing that you would say is the best thing about your program? I'll let Lauren or Adam answer that. I would just say the, hi, I'm Lauren. Um, I would say that the people are like definitely one of my favorite things. And I also like the fact that, um, we like the program is new and there's change happening um, on a monthly basis, which is kind of nice. And we've been able to really affect the change that happens. So um, with our program directors and, and um, Sullivan and Kennedy, um, really open for our like thoughts and concerns. So that's been really helpful. So that was like my favorite thing about our program. I see one here about mentorship in our program. I think it's really strong. They're actually talking about assigning 
uh, we, like some of us, most of us have kind of found our mentors on our own. And I think now they're going to try to assign people more directly to someone. But I had time to talk to, we talked to our program director about it and we don't care so much about that because just being a smaller program with four each year, it's pretty easy to find a mentor in whatever field you're interested in. And like, yeah, I didn't talk as much about research, but I mean, Vanderbilt is one of the top 10 in AH funded, maybe even top five programs in the country. So it's easy to get on any big research. We're all on really large research projects here at Vanderbilt in whatever specialty you want to go into, whether it's sports, spine, spinal cord injury, TBI, you can get on a lot. There's a lot of research to do. Very easy. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much for your, for your presentation and your time. Unfortunately, time is over, uh, but I would encourage like every other